Hello and welcome. I am Chelsea Jackson Roberts. I am a global ambassador and the founder of Yoga Literature and Art Camp for Teen Girls. Today, we are going to practice yoga and I'm joined by my friends Anita and Steve and they're gonna help me out so that we can practice and see all of the different ways our bodies can move together. And so if you're joining us today and you're in the comfort of your home, I invite you to do a couple of things before we get started. So first of all, you can sit on a block like Steve is here. If you feel like your hips are pretty tight or if the knees are really lifted when you're sitting in this cross leg position, I also invite you to get a blanket. We're gonna have a really nice Shavasana at the end of our practice. So it's really nice to be able to get cozy or even roll up the, the blanket in order to support the knees in the low back. And so this practice today is really grounded in all of the variations that our life encompasses, right? So when we go out into the world every day, we don't necessarily know what we're going to expect or we don't know what to expect. And so our yoga practice can be a framework for how we respond and even sometimes reflect on the things that our bodies and our minds and our emotions handle each and every day. So if you're ready, I invite you to come to a comfortable cross leg position and we're gonna get started with a breathing exercise. So go ahead and take the fleshy part of the thighs. You're gonna inwardly rotate them and this is just for us to get really grounded and connected. The hips will just sway out to the side and again, you can also use your block or even a blanket and you can sit to the edge of the blanket. And that's if you notice that the spine is beginning to curl and you're starting to kind of fold in through the chest and the low back. And so together, we're gonna take in a deep inhale, draw the shoulders up toward the ears and then exhale them back around and down. And then from here, we're gonna turn the palms facing up or you can place the hands facing down. It's all preference for what you want in your practice today. So take in a deep inhale through the nose and you're gonna let it out through an open mouth. Do that again, inhale through the nose. Ha sound, open mouth. Good, do that again, inhale. Now ha sound out through the mouth and you're gonna just start to close the lips. We're gonna do the ujjayi breath, the victorious breath. Inhale through the nose. And from here on out, you're gonna simply close the mouth or the lips as you breathe out. Two more times, inhale. And last one, inhale deeply through the nose. Ha sound, back of the throat. And ground in, breathe in. Allow yourself to arrive to this moment, to this practice, to this day. No matter what time you're joining us, from whatever part of the world you're in, allow yourself to connect. On your next inhale, draw the palms together, right at the heart center, coming into pranam or prayer pose. Allow yourself to commit to whatever your practice is, in devotion to, in service to, Allow yourself to ground and root into the earth as you breathe in. Allow the energy to organically rise up. So together, let's take in a deep inhale. Exhale here. And when you're ready, after you have set your intention, you can begin to release the hands down onto the knees. And we're gonna start by allowing the spine to really open. So we're gonna breathe in, place the hands here on the knees, and this is gonna be our anchor. So a lot of the practices, a lot of the sequences that we do today are going to really be committed to accessibility. So no matter where you are in your yoga journey, hopefully something in this practice will resonate with you. So on your inhale, you're gonna bring the chest forward. All right, it's like an exaggeration of bringing the chest forward. Exhale, you're gonna roll the spine back, tuck the chin into the throat, squeeze the belly. Inhale, bring the chest forward. Open the throat, exhale, round the spine, tuck the chin into the throat. All right, so continue to move with this. Inhale, chest comes forward, good. Softening the face, exhale, round the spine back, good. Two more time on your own. Exhale it back. 
And then last one, inhale, bring the chest forward. And now slow motion, exhale, round the spine. All right, we're gonna inhale to a neutral spine, bring the shoulders up toward the ears, exhale them back around and down. Do that on your own. Inhale up, exhale back around and down. So continue this moment, this movement, right, in this moment as you open the heart. With each inhale, feel the shoulders really round back, out really rotating in order to open the heart even more, right? So again, you don't have to do a lot of movements to be practicing this very sacred and ancient practice of patterning the breath with the body. And now on this next inhale, we're going to lift the hands off of the legs and lead with the elbows coming all the way back, right? So we're counter- it's a counter movement to what we are probably typically doing throughout the day, driving cars, working at our computers, doing all of these things that start to collapse the heart. But instead, we're going to move in the opposite direction. On the next inhale, bring the fingertips onto the shoulders, right? Lifting up through the heart. Good. And now from here, inhale, reach the arms all the way up. Exhale, bring the left hand down onto the earth. Inhale, reach up through the fingertips, exhale, just dive over here. Good. So as you're moving through these postures, I want you to really get acquainted with how the body feels. So notice if you're reaching so far off into the world, right? We're trying to do all these things in the world that you become disconnected. Inhale, reach, but then integrate by drawing the arm back into the shoulder. Notice how this begins to naturally open the heart here. Taking one more inhale, lengthening here through our blissful chakras, and then exhale, integrating, allowing that shoulder to bring back into the shoulder blade. Good. Now from here, you're going to bring this right hand down onto the earth, and you're just going to alternate. So you're going to Inhale, lift this left arm up now, and then you're going to curl over, making this letter C with the body. Just imagine maybe a beach ball right underneath the side body here. Again, you can always bring this bicep right over the ear, outward rotation in the shoulders. Try to soften the face on the exhale. Let's inhale together, and then exhale, integrate and soften. And now from here, we're going to just switch sides. So bring this left hand down onto the earth. Bring the right arm up. And you're just going to lean over. We're going to press against the earth. Inhale, both arms up. To center, exhale over. Good. Inhale, both arms up. Exhale over. Good. And now we're just going to come right back to center, reaching up. We're going to move into a twist, a spinal twist toward the right side. So just start to move toward the right side. Bring the left hand onto the right knee. Bring the right hand onto the back of the earth, right? Right behind the body. And now when you're practicing this at home, I invite you to out really again, rotate that right shoulder. Nice twist here. Now inhale, lengthen through the spine. Exhale, integrate, soften through the shoulders. Good. Do that again. Maybe the breath starts right at the base of the spine as you inhale, just like a thermometer moving up to the crown of the head. As you exhale, it returns right back to the base of the spine. Good. One more time. Inhale, up the spine. Exhale, engage the belly. And now we're going to lift both arms to center, reaching up. Inhale, reach up over to the other side. Right hand comes onto the left knee. And then the fingertips can come onto the earth. I always like to bring fingertips onto the earth because it gives me a little bit more room to lengthen up through the heart here. So taking a deep inhale up the base of the spine. Exhale, as you start to twist, see if you can engage the navel so much that you naturally are able to twist even more. So wringing out the spine. So a lot of times in our lives, we can come up against a lot of tension, right? Natural tensions, just tensions that we have in our own minds. And this is a great way for us to wring out the nervous system here. So from here, you all, we're going to inhale, bring the arms right back to center. So you're going to start to release, reaching up, and then you're going to exhale the hands right back to the center. All right. When I go out into the world, I don't know about you, but force field energy really works. All right. So we're going to start to create our own force field of positive energy around our bodies. So you're going to inhale, reach the fingertips up toward the ceiling or the sky. Exhale, full circle around the body. You can close the eyes as you do it. Return the hands back to the heart. Inhale, reach the fingertips up. Exhale, you're going to bring the fingertips down onto the earth. 
Good, and you're gonna just crawl those fingertips out until you're still touching the earth. Very nice. And now you're gonna outwardly rotate the shoulders. So equally on both sides, you're reaching out. And you're just starting to connect with the earth here. And I invite you to close your eyes as you practice with us, taking a deep inhale, feeling the grounding nature of the earth right beneath us. This is what we know for sure. Allow yourself to connect with this each and every time before you step out into the world. Feel that grounding, feel that connection. Feel the earth. And together, one more deep inhale. And exhale here. And as you begin to open your eyes, I invite you to transition onto your hands and knees, coming into a tabletop position. So as soon as you set up into your tabletop position, you always want to make sure you have a strong foundation. So spread the fingers wide, really making a commitment, a deliberate commitment out in this world, right? The wrists are directly underneath the shoulders. Curl the toes under to engage the hamstrings even more. Take in a deep inhale, lift the hips and the chest and the throat and cow. Exhale, round the spine, tuck the chin into the throat. Now, these people right here have been practicing this motion right back and forth in and out you're just trying to really allow the contraction and expansion to happen now you at home this may be your first time practicing cat and cow take a look at the different ways that our bodies respond maybe you're going all the way extending the hips all the way up or really crunching and rolling the shoulders forward or perhaps it's a little bit more subtle so i want you to find what is good for your body so continuing this movement allows us to move the energy up and down the spine, up and down the shishumna, all right? And so we're just making this clearing here. So just notice how the body feels as you do this. Now, on your next exhale, round the spine, slow motion, exaggerate it. Now, inhale, start to lift the hips and the chest and the heart into your cow posture. Now from here, neutral spine, we're gonna transition into our first downward facing dog. So as you start to get into your down dog, I want you to warm up the hamstrings as much as you need to. So you're gonna start to press one heel down at a time, right? You can shift the body weight left and right, just making sure that you're doing all that you need to do to warm up the hips, the hamstrings. These are the areas that will typically be tight, right? Especially as we move in this world. So do me a favor, wherever you are, I want you to pause and come onto tippy toes, really exaggerating this lift, right? So you feel the hips really lift. And now start to press through the heels, exaggerating that. Now the feet don't have to come completely flat onto the ground. They can hover a little bit. Come onto tippy toes again. And then exhale, press through the heels. Now from here, I want you to press one heel down at a time. Start to shift the hips left and right. And bend the knees as much as you need to as you make your way to the top of the mat. So you're just going to start to tippy toe your way to the top of the mat, coming into a forward fold. Now, once you get into that forward fold, I want you to check your stance here. Notice if you need to bend the knees a little bit. So yes. So we have a soft bend here with Steve in order for him to really allow his low back to have as, as much space as it needs. And then over here, we have Anita who may actually allow the hips to press forward a little bit. So shifting the body weight, you want it to be evenly distributed between all four corners of the feet. And at the same time, you want to try to work on lifting up through the hips, right? As you're moving into this forward fold, go ahead and grab opposite elbows for me. I want to make sure that we're completely letting go of any tension in the neck. Shake the head a few times, yes. And a few times, no, on your own, good. So from here, we're gonna let out a big sigh and we're gonna release the arms. So take in a deep inhale and now release the arms down to the earth. Let out the breath, good. Now bend the knees slightly, bring the hands onto the hips, roll the shoulders back, exaggerate pressing the heart forward, ground into all four corners of the feet and now start to make your way up into standing. 
and exhale shoulders come up back around and just bring the arms right beside you inhale draw in that energy sacred space right to the heart center palms come together exhale soften here good inhale reach the arms up fingertips lead up and now on our swan dive bring the arms out beside you lead with the heart swan dive forward coming all the way into a forward fold good now we're going to take a half lift at any time if you need to bring your blocks in Feel free to grab your blocks. Yep, you got it. All right, your half lift. You're really working on getting long here through the spine. And you can even allow energy to move out through the crown here. And then exhale, forward fold. Do that a couple of times, just like cat and cow. Inhale, you lengthen. So inhale, half lift. Good. Exhale, bow, forward fold. Good. One more time on your own. Inhale. And then exhale here. Good. Bring the hands onto the earth, and you're just going to step back into your downward facing dog again. All right, we're really going to start to warm up the body here. Shift the body weight forward into plank. We're going to do this a couple of rounds. Good. Now pause here in your plank. So plank is one of those postures that I always think about parallel, right, to life, right? It gets tough. It gets really challenging there, especially once you get to the end of something. This is where the ujjayi breath works every time. Taking a deep inhale through the nose. Ha sound, back of the throat. Even at home, really exaggerate that. Inhale through the nose. Ha sound, back of the throat. Right when it feels like you can't hold on anymore. Inhale. And now bring the knees down onto the earth. Chin, chest, knees, toes come down onto the ground. So it's an exaggeration. The hips are kind of lifted here, right? And now from here, you're going to slide through cobra. Open up through the heart. And then even soften the jaw. And then we're going to fold all the way down on the exhale. And you're going to just press into either tabletop or straight into downward facing dog. It's up to you. We all have different journeys to this destination. Breathe. All right. So let's do that a couple of rounds on our own. So shift the body weight forward plank. Exhale, eight-point pose, or you can do chaturanga, much like a push-up coming down. Inhale, cobra, or even upward if you want to come onto the tops of the feet or lifting right off of the earth. Exhale, downward-facing dog. Variation, you can always come into tabletop or child's pose. One final time, shift the body weight forward, plank. Notice how the belly is integrated. Exhale, eight-point pose or chaturanga coming all the way down. Inhale, cobra or upward, lifting up, exhale, downward facing dog, full breath, breathe. Now this is where we sometimes need permission to take care of ourselves. Together, take in a deep inhale, exhale, bring the knees down onto the earth, press the hips back, child's pose. So when I started practicing, there was this narrative that I had in my mind that if I was not sweating completely all the way through or if I was not out of breath or if I didn't feel like I had this full workout through yoga that I wasn't practicing. But as we can see that one of the biggest workouts for yoga is through our mind and our practice. So notice how your body shows up for you in the world. Notice how you respond to the world through your practice right now. Take in a deep inhale. Give yourself permission to drink in. Inhale, tabletop position when you're ready. Curl the toes under, downward facing dog. Now another part of the body that we really like to power up, especially when we're looking to harness our strength, is the core, the third chakra, the belly, the solar plexus. So what we're going to do here is shift the body weight onto our left foot and lift the right leg into the air. Good. And now notice how the toes are pointing down toward the earth. And it's fine for the leg to have a slight bend in it. And now you're going to engage the belly and you're going to bring the leg all the way through. Another variation is to come down onto the knees and walk the foot forward. All right. Yep. Just like Steve has done right here. All right. Now from here, walk the hands onto this right knee. Yep. And then you're just going to bring the arms right beside you. Inhale, roll the shoulders up, back around, just right beside you. Good. And now inhale, sweep up. And then exhale, touch right back down. All right. 
Good. And we're going to just put a vinyasa in the middle of it. So start to lift the knee up, step back, plank. Exhale, eight-point pose or chaturanga. Good. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. So notice how you really must engage the belly, the third chakra, in order to get that leg forward. Inhale, left leg comes up. Good. And you're going to sweep that leg all the way through. Very nice. You can either bring the knee down onto the earth or keep it lifted. Walk the hands onto that left knee to start just to get yourself centered. So that's another thing, harnessing and finding the center in the midst of even chaos at times. Bring the arms beside you. Inhale, shoulders come up, back, around, and down. Beautiful. Inhale, sweep the arms up as you move out into the world. Exhale, you bow coming forward. Bring the hands down onto the earth. Beautiful. Optional vinyasa, or you can always meet us in down dog or child's pose. So you step back. And you just move with your breath, right? When you find yourself in practices or classes and it's not in the same rhythm as the person next to you, that is fine. One of my favorite sayings from one of my teachers is that we are all a part of the ocean and we all have these individual waves within them. So just notice how your body may be different and uniquely ordered in order for us to move through this practice. Shift the body weight forward, plank. Come all the way down into the belly. And go ahead and fold the arms in front of you, placing one forearm on top of the other and place the forehead on top of the forearms. So in this practice, it's always nice to charge up or fire up in order to come right back down. That's our practice of integration. So instead of moving in this world, just fully just powering through without giving ourselves any time to rest or integrate is not sustainable. So find ways to use your practice to practice this out in the world. So take a couple more times here. This is a really great posture to massage the internal organs. Um, this is counterintuitive if you are expecting. You want to make sure that you come back into child's pose and maybe have a cushion there for you. But this is extraordinary for the digestive system as you really allow gravity to pull the upper part of the body down to the earth. And as you're breathing, it's offering an internal massage to those, those digestive organs there. So once you're ready and you feel pretty nourished from that breathing exercise, I want you to bring the hands, palms down onto the earth right underneath the shoulders, just as if you were going to go into cobra. All right, now try to outwardly rotate the shoulders so that the heart is leading forward. Now from here, inhale, come up into your cobra just for a brief second here. And you're just going to look to your right, back to center, and then over to your left. Yes, back to center. Good. Taking a deep inhale, exhale, fold all the way down, curl the toes under, downward facing dog. So from here, we're going to start to move with the breath. All right, start to shift the body weight left and right, tippy toe the body all the way to the top of the mat, coming into a forward fold. Uttanasana. Bring the hands onto the hips, roll the shoulders back, inhale, come all the way up. This time, we're going to extend the arms up. And exhale, hands come right to the heart center. All right? So inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, swan dive down. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, bow forward. From here, you can either step or hop back into plank. And first breathe in here in plank. Exhale, come all the way down. Eight-point pose or chaturanga. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Good. Optional here, lift the right leg up into the air, or you can simply step forward. Right leg comes all the way through, runner's lunge. Good. Now ground this left heel down onto the earth. Warrior two, so a heel to arch intersection. So you're going to lift this knee off of the ground if you haven't. You're going to ground it flat onto the earth. You may have to walk it in depending on your stance. And then you're just going to cartwheel the arms up coming into warrior two. Now remember in your warrior two, a lot of times we will crunch up here in the shoulders, right? A lot of times we are working so hard in the world that all of our awareness starts to not really notice where the tension is. So notice here in your body where the tension may be. For me, it's my shoulders. Taking a deep inhale. 
And then exhale, allow that integration to happen. Shoulder blades, good. One more time, inhale. And exhale, reaching through, beautiful. Taking another inhale, very nice. Drop the left hand onto the back leg, right arm reaches up, peaceful warrior. From here, exhale, extended angle. In the right elbow, forearm comes onto the thigh, extend that left arm over. Good, do that one more time. Inhale, peaceful warrior. Just a great way to get the blood pumping. And now exhale, cartwheel both hands down to the top of the mat, pivot onto the toes. Step back, optional vinyasa or meet us in down dog. It's up to you. Something may be different than the day before or the year before. Allow yourself to be present. Allow yourself to be aware of what you need. Breathe here. Let's do a few moments of breath in order to loosen any tightness in the face. So we're going to do a lion's breath. You're going to be able to see me, but whenever you go to a yoga class, you have complete privacy to do this. So everybody take in a deep inhale, and then you're going to exhale, stick, exhale and stick out the tongue. Just like that. Take in a deep inhale. Let it go. And this starts to release any muscle tension in the jaw, breathe. All right, we're going to do this other side. So shift the body weight into the right foot, lift the left leg into the air. That's optional. Or you can step the left leg all the way through. Now when you ground down, I want it to be a heel to arch intersection. So start to lift the right knee up and ground down there. Very nice. And now inhale, cartwheel the arms open. Exhale, integrate into the posture. Inhale, stay here, warrior two. Exhale, drop the right hand onto the back leg. Left arm reaches up. Beautiful. Stay here for the inhale. And then exhale, extended angle. Bend that left elbow. Right arm reaches over. Inhale, peaceful warrior again. And now exhale, cartwheel both hands down to the top of the mat. Optional vinyasa, or you can meet us in down dog. And again, you allow yourself to take in whatever expression, whatever shapes the body wants to make. Breathe. All right, so look to the top of your mat and now you have choices. Every time we go out into the world, we have a choice. I want you to choose whether you step, tippy toe, or hop to the top of the mat, Uttanasana, forward fold. So it's kind of fun to play around with what do I typically do and how can I just see what would feel different, right? So from here, bring the hands onto the hips, roll the shoulders back. Inhale, come all the way up. We're going to come into standing, reaching the arms up. And then exhale, hands come right to the heart center. Good. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, swan dive down. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, bow. Either stop or step or hop back into plank. And then you're going to exhale, come all the way down onto your belly. You're going to inhale, cobra. And exhale, downward facing dog. So just the basics here in this practice, right? Our foundation. Good. And so now from here, bring the knees down onto the earth. And start to walk the hands back to the knees. You're going to come sitting upright onto the knees into a kneeling position. All right? So you're going to sit off of the heels, and you're going to sit into a kneeling position here. All right? So from here, you're going to inhale, reach the arms up. And then you're just going to exhale right to the heart. Good. Now let's make a circle. Inhale, reach up. And now hands come to the heart here. All right, now this time we're going to inhale. I'll demonstrate first, and then you're going to come down, and then you're just going to come right back up, all right? And then exhale, hands to the heart, all right? You're going to inhale, come up. You're going to fold forward, press against the earth, and then you're just going to come right back up. Hands come to the heart, all right? Inhale, circle around. Exhale, come down. Inhale, come up. Hands come to the heart. Big circle around the body. Reach up. 
Exhale, come down. Good. Inhale, come up. Hands come to the heart. Last one, full circle around. Exhale, come down. Good. Inhale, come up. Hands come right to the heart center. Good. Now come down onto the heels. Now open up the knees. Bring the hands onto the earth, child's pose. And so I just want you to find a way to get into the hips, especially after engaging a lot of energy in the practice or the postures that came right before child's pose and just noticing how the body changes when you allow yourself to restore. All right. So taking another inhale here and exhale the breath. Inhale, tabletop. Curl the toes under, downward facing dog. Now walk the hands back to meet the feet. Now a big part of what's so amazing about our yoga practice is that it makes us more aware about sensation. So wherever you are, this is going to get a little weird now. So bend the knees slightly. You're going to ball your hands into fists, and you're just going to start to hit the backs of your calves, the backs of your quads, the tops of your quads, Yes, the hips. Now start to make your way coming up, and you're going to continue to create the sensation. Now, as you start to get to the abdomen, you may just use the palm of your hand. All right, the back. Right? You're doing this at home. This is a great way to wake the body up. Now come back to fists. <laughs> All right, now we're going to take the fingertips, and we're just going to touch the face. Breathe the neck, the ears. Now, wherever you are at home, take in a deep inhale and just bring the arms beside you. Notice the sensation. Notice how the body feels in this moment. Breathing in and out. And now from here, bring the hands right to the heart center, coming into prayer. Inhale, full circle around the body, reach the arms up. You're going to exhale, bring the arms behind you, interlacing the fingers. Now you can try to bend the elbows so that the heel of the hands can touch each other. And you're going to inhale, lift up through the heart. You're going to exhale, start to bend the knees. You can even feel the belly against the quads as you start to fold. Now chair pose, release the hands, sweep the arms beside you, and then exhale, bow, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, bow. Good, bring the hands onto the hips, roll the shoulders back, exaggerate this. Inhale as you come up, reach the arms up. Exhale, hands come to the heart. Inhale, reach the arms up through the fingertips. Exhale, force field of energy around the body. Interlace the fingers behind you. Inhale, heart leads out into the world through our work. Exhale, you bow, pour forward a devotion. Good. Inhale, release the arms beside you, sweeping up chair pose. Find the strength in your quads. Find the strength in your practice. Inhale here. Exhale, bow. Find the surrender as you melt forward. Inhale, get long expansion as you come into a half lift. Exhale, bow. Last one, hands come onto the hips. Roll the shoulders back. Inhale, come up energetically. Reach the arms up. Draw that energy right to the heart center. Last one, full circle around. Inhale, sweep the arms up. And then you're going to exhale, bring the arms behind you. Interlace the fingers. Inhale, lead with the heart. And then exhale, bow forward, bend the knees, fill the belly against the quads. Inhale, strong strength, sweep the arms beside you, chair pose. Beautiful, exhale, bow, forward fold, surrender. Inhale, half lift, expansion. Exhale, bow. Bring the hands onto the earth, walk the hands back into downward facing dog. All right, continuing with that power in the belly, 
in the core. Inhale, reach the right leg up toward the sky. And now you're going to cross over. Try to touch the right knee to the left elbow. So you're crossing right over the abdomen. Good. Inhale, right leg comes right back up. Three-legged dog. Now you're going to try to touch that right knee to the outside of the right elbow. Beautiful. Inhale, come right back up. Three-legged dog. All right, you're gonna come all the way through runner's lunge. You can also bring the knees down onto the earth and step forward. And we're gonna hold here. So you can either keep the knee onto the earth or lift up runner's lunge. Good, taking a deep breath. Exhale here. Now place that left hand onto the earth. You're going to place the right hand onto the right knee. Start to twist open here, spinal twist. As you open, optional, you can lift that right arm up toward the sky or keep it there on the knee. Now this is where our strength meets the ease, and we find it through the breath. Take in a deep inhale, scissor in through the thighs. Allow the body to stay strong, centered, but still soft. Taking another inhale. Exhale, touch down, optional vinyasa, or meet us in downward facing dog. So I'm just gonna let them allow the body to move how the breath is guiding it. And we'll meet in downward facing dog, breathing. All right, we're gonna do the other side. Again, you really wanna power up the belly, the third chakra. This is our seat of power, our strength. So inhale, sweep that left leg up. All right, we're gonna bring it through and touch that right elbow. So you're gonna cross over the abdominal, that third chakra, inhale, three-legged dog, beautiful. And then you're gonna bring it through the outer edge of that left elbow, good. Inhale, three-legged dog. And then you're gonna step it all the way through into your runner's lunge. Now, options here, you have options. You can either keep the knee down here on the ground like Steve, or you can keep the, lead, the knee lifted here like Anita. All right, keep that right hand grounded onto the earth, and we're gonna move into our twist. So you're gonna start to twist the body. I love how Steve has this hand right here on the knee. That's gonna allow some leverage, some anchor for you to start to move into that twist. And then once you get to a point where you want to start to extend the arm up, go for it. Wherever you are, breathe. Let's do it together. Take in a deep inhale. Exhale here. Yes, find the surrender even when we have to be strong. And on your next exhale, go ahead and touch down, bringing the hand down onto the earth. And you can move through a vinyasa or meet us in down dog. So as you breathe, make sure that the body is encompassing all that we see and want for ourselves in the world, right? Whether it's for us to push ourselves to our edge, to pull back in order to take care, take in a deep inhale. And now bring the knees down into the earth. Give yourself permission to restore. Bring the hips back to the heels, child's pose. So you can also play around with the positioning of the arms here. So Anita, if you can bring your palms together and the fingertips are facing, yes, the front of your mat, good. And then if you'd like, you can bend at the elbows, placing the palms right at the base of the skull there, good. And then Steve here, if he's looking for more of a lengthening through the spine, I'm gonna invite him to take in a deep breath and then just softening right here at the heart center. Good, very nice. And then another option you can try is you can bring the arms right beside you. So go ahead and slide the arms beside you, Steve, yep. Fingertips facing the back of the mat. So go ahead and uncurl the toes. Yes, good, very nice, beautiful. So oftentimes we try, at least I will speak for myself, I will tend to bypass what I think are the easy postures, and a lot of times those are the postures that are the most challenging, right? What is it that I'm sitting with in my practice, in my posture? Taking a deep inhale. Exhale here. 
And then from here, go ahead and release the hands down onto the earth. You're going to bring the hands underneath the shoulders. And you're just going to come back sitting onto the heels. You're going to swing the legs around and come onto your bottom. So you can even scoot the feet to the top of the mat so that you have space for the bottom. Good. And so from here, we're going to move into a little bit more of core strengthening. So you're going to place the hands underneath the thighs. All right. Soles of feet are flat onto the earth. Inhale, shoulders come up, back around. Now feel the lengthening through the spine, the opening of the heart. See if you can maintain this. If you can, start to lift the heels off of the ground. All right. Now here's where the core is coming in. Notice here, as you're practicing at home or wherever you are in the world, notice if you're starting to round. If that's the case, you want to start to lengthen here through the spine, lead with the heart, and then notice if you can bring the legs parallel, right? Maybe you release the arms, Navasana, boat pose. And then another variation is to extend the legs out and up. Taking a deep inhale, and together, we're going to bring the top and bottom halves of the body down onto the earth. And as soon as you touch down, reach the arms back. Take a full stretch. And then exhale, draw the knees into your chest. Give yourselves a big hug, thanking yourself for practicing. So whether you have 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 60 minutes, whatever it is, our practice is here for us. Start to rock left and right a little bit, massaging the low back. Taking another inhale. And go ahead and extend the left leg down onto the earth. Good. Interlace the fingers a couple of inches below that right kneecap. And I want you to relax this right foot. Matter of fact, do a couple of circles with this right ankle. Yep. And with this left leg, you're really flexing the left foot in order for us to stabilize it onto the earth. So just as a demonstration, this is flex. This is a great flex. This is not flex. So we want flex so that the heel is grounded, anchored. And you can even inwardly rotate the thigh here so that you're pressing it down to the earth. Good. And switch the direction of the circles if you haven't already. Looking nice, you all. Now. Go ahead and flop this right leg, this right foot, foot a little bit, just so that you know that it's completely relaxed. Interlace the fingers all the way to the webbing, taking a deep inhale. On the exhale, start to draw that knee into the chest. Now, if the rib cage is in the way, that's fine. You can bring the leg out to the side first and then draw it back in. So taking another inhale, getting into the ascending colon. So again, a total workout, wringing out of any toxins that's in the body. Now, from here, we're going to extend the right arm out to the side, creating an anchor. And you're going to place the sole of this right foot right at the top of the left thigh. So you're just resting it there. Yep, getting ready for a spinal twist. So bring this arm out to the side as your anchor. Good. Yep, if you're limited on space, you can always bend the elbow. Now take in a deep inhale. Now on your exhale, you're going to start to bring this knee over to the left side of your mat. Good. So just as we started in the beginning part of our practice of twisting and wringing out, we're continuing that as we come to the closing part of our practice. So we get this energy moving right through our energy points, through our chakras, and then as a way for us to integrate and allow it to be really absorbed into the body, a spinal twist is a great way to allow it to seep deeper into the bones, into our joints, into our bodies. So taking another inhale, and a final variation is you can lift the head gently and look in the opposite direction of your knee. Right? Now remember this integration. Now notice if your arm doesn't feel engaged. Start to draw the arm back into the shoulder. Notice how that opens up the heart even more. Press the back of that right shoulder blade onto the ground. Taking another inhale. Exhale here. Now inhale. Draw the knee back to center. And then you're going to release on the exhale. Right leg comes down. And go ahead and relax everything in the body. All right, so at home, allow yourself to take this time, right? A lot of times we want to bypass these moments of rest. 
And I'm here to remind you that the rest is essential to sustain anything that we're doing in this world. Let's do the other side. Inhale, left leg comes in. Draw that knee all the way in. Interlace the fingers down to the bottom right of the knee. And go ahead and make some circles on this left ankle just so that we know that it's completely relaxed. So what happens is that on one side, we're completely engaged, we're plugged in, we're flexed, we're doing all of this on that right side to plug us down. But then on this left side, I want us to try to really be as relaxed and open as possible. So switch the direction if you haven't done both sides already. So at home, again, allow yourself space and time to be able to do a practice, right? Interlace the fingers all the way to the webbing, inhale. Now really try to relax this left foot. You don't want it flexed anymore. You can even practice that at home. See what happens when that left foot or the foot that you're holding is flexed compared to when it's pretty relaxed. Now on that right side, you do want it flexed, okay? It allows us to get into the hip a little bit more. Take in another inhale. I want you to draw it all the way in on the exhale as if you had a balloon that was deflating as you pressed in and pushed out any cell energy. Now from here, we'll move into wringing out the spine. Go ahead and place the left arm onto the earth. You can extend it out in order to create an anchor or you can bend the elbow. First, breathe. And now on the exhale, start to move into your twist, right? Notice at what point in your practice your body moves before you breathe. At what point in your life you speak or you move or you act in the world without taking that breath? Use this moment to find that calm, to find that stillness, to find that grounding. Taking a deep inhale. As you listen to my voice, I invite you to close your eyes. Notice where the breath is. Notice how the breath moves. Notice the sensation within the body. Notice where the resistance is. Notice where you feel fabulous. Notice where you're curious. Notice where you're reflective. Take in a deep inhale. Exhale the breath. So we're gonna start to move out of this Posture by inhaling, drawing the knee back to center. And then exhale, release that left leg down onto the earth. Now, I invited many of you to perhaps have blocks. Even if you don't have blocks at home, you can use a stack of books, preferably like thick ones. Um, but you can always use blocks, especially when we're trying to restore our body at the end of a practice. All right, so I want us to use our blocks um, on one option of the next, next sequence that we do. So we're going to bend both legs, placing the soles of the feet onto the ground. Bring the arms right beside you. All right, so inversions are really nice to do at the end of your class or end of your practice if you're at home. And so some of the things that you can do with a blocks or a cushion or a pillow is first noticing if you are actually keeping the hips parallel, right? So I'm going to place a block right here in between Steve's thighs there, between the quads. All right, so we're going to move into bridge posture. So go ahead and make robot arms. This is just for us to get grounded. You can either extend energy out of the fingertips or make fists. Now from here, before you even start to lift the hips off of the ground, I want you to press the back of the head into the earth. Outwardly rotate the shoulders, feel the heart open. Take in a deep inhale. Now feel the strength between the elbows and the shoulders. Bring the arms back onto the earth, trying to maintain that. And now inhale, lift the hips off of the ground. Now notice how Steve has the block. That allows his legs to stay parallel, right? The tendency or common misalignment is for the knees to sway in or out. This is going to make sure that the knees stay nice and parallel, right? Taking another inhale. Very nice. Exhale, bring the hips down onto the earth. Good. 
All right, so we're gonna do this the second round, or you can make this more even of a restorative posture. So this is pretty intense to use the block in between the thighs, because you're constantly hugging in. So another way to do this in the most restorative, restorative way is with a block underneath the bottom. So go ahead and come into your bridge posture, and it's optional for you to grab a block or two, and then to go ahead and bring the hips back down onto the block. How does that feel? Or do you need an adjustment there? Okay, good. All right. So again, the key here is to allow yourself to still create this shape, right? Yoga and postures, we're making different shapes with these very unique bodies we have. So really pressing into all four corners of the feet instead of using every muscle in the bottom or the glute to keep you lifted, I want you to really focus on pressing against the earth to create the lift. So take in one more inhale. And then when you're ready to release and come out, go ahead and lift up for me, Steve. And then exhale, go ahead and release from this posture. Go ahead and draw the legs in, but separate the space in between the thighs. And see if you can grab the outer edges of the feet, coming into happy baby. Yes, good. Yes, that's nice. So different options here. So one grip is for you to place the hands on the outer edges of the feet, right? Depending on what's available for you. Let's see, see what happens if you bring it to the outer edge. Yeah, yeah, how does that feel? Nice, yes. So in our happy baby posture, this is a great release and attention to the hips here. So sometimes you can even play around with the weight distribution, shifting body weight left and right, massaging the low back. So taking a deep inhale. And as you exhale, I want you to concentrate on bringing the knees down toward the earth, the soles of the feet shining up towards the heavens and allowing the heart to open as you breathe. Take in a deep inhale. And exhale here. So if you feel like you want to hang out here for a few more breaths, go for it. Right? If you are ready to come out before just allowing the body to do all the work, I want you to take one hand onto the outer edge of the thigh and then another hand onto the opposite thigh. And I want you to really support yourself as you draw the legs in, bring the soles of the feet onto the ground, and slide the legs all the way down onto the earth. And here we are for our Shavasana. So I reminded you earlier that in your practice, I want every aspect of our practice to be valued. Many times at the end of your yoga practice, this may be your cue to go and leave and get out of the moment. But if you can, if you have the time and space to take five minutes for yourself of doing nothing but being, allowing yourself to be breathed, allowing yourself to restore. You are worth it. Taking a deep inhale. And exhale the breath. Notice what you are in need of in this moment. Are you chilly? Perhaps you want to place a blanket on top of you. Do you need more support for the low back? If you feel any tension in the low back, feel free to bend the legs. So you're gonna bring the soles of the feet onto the ground, separate the feet the width of the mat, and just allow the knees to rest against each other. Right, that's another version that you can always choose and that can be available for your Shavasana. Allow the palms to face up. This allows your chest to really relax to open. So as you're at home, concluding your practice, maybe beginning your day or perhaps ending it, allow yourself to feel. Take in a deep inhale. As you exhale, feel how alive you are in this moment. Take in another inhale. As 
as you exhale, feel the sensations in the different parts of the body. Take in one more deep inhale. And this time as you exhale, feel your presence. Feel your awakeness. Feel your enoughness. Allow your body to listen. And together, wherever you are in this world, in this practice, let's take in a collective, deep, cleansing breath. Take in a deep inhale through the nose. And now open the mouth. <sighs> Let it out. One more time. Inhale. Exhale it out through the mouth. Give yourself permission. Start to bring movement into the fingers by wiggling the fingers, wiggling the toes. If the legs are bent, you can windshield wiper the knees, just shifting left and right, just carefully awakening the body. And then whatever version you chose, we're going to move through a great stretch. Extend the arms overhead. Extend the legs towards the top of your mat like you're waking up the first thing this morning. And then exhale, draw the knees into your chest. Give yourselves again one big bear hug, thanking yourself for practicing, for being. And then when you're ready... You're going to bring the feet onto the ground and make your way onto your right side, coming into a fetal position. And take in a full breath. And as you exhale, I want you to begin to place the hands onto the earth with deliberate awareness, making your way back into easy pose, Sukhasana. And it's here where we will seal in the sacred practice, taking a deep inhale together, exhale here. We're going to bring the left hand to the chest, right to the heart center, and then you're going to place the right hand on top of that left hand, and together, let's take in a deep inhale, and exhale here. And just to close, go ahead and bring the palms together, coming into pranam or prayer. Let's take in one more deep inhale and exhale here. Thank you for joining us. It has been an honor to practice with you today. Namaste.